Number 86. During a recent winter month in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, it was necessary to obtain 3,500 kilowatt hours of heat provided by a natural gas furnace with 89% efficiency to keep a small house warm. And the efficiency of a gas furnace is the percent of the heat produced by combustion that's transferred into the house. Okay, so we're almost at the end, guys. Letter F. It says, how many kilowatt hours... And then they give us this little conversion here of electricity would be required to produce the heat necessary to heat the house. And then they give this, us this little hint. Note, electricity is 100% efficient in producing heat inside the house. So that means that whatever you put in, all of it is going to efficiently heat the house. All of it is going to be produced by combustion, right? And gets transferred into the house, and then you have heat in the house. Now, in this case, the 35 kilowatt hours was only 89% of the total that was needed to, you know, heat the house. But in this case, if the electricity is 100%, that means that whatever was put in, that's what's going to be used to heat the house. So in this case, if the electricity is 100% efficient, this would just be the same number. It would be 3,500 kilowatt hours. Perfect. There, basically, there's no extra heat that is needed uh, to basically heat the house. Everything is going to go into the production of heat, and then it gets transferred into the house. Cool. So that one was done. So now there's one last part. Let's do this, guys. Although electricity is 100% efficient in producing heat inside a house, production and distribution of electricity is not 100% efficient. Oh no. The efficiency of production and distribution of electricity produced in a coal-fired power plant is about 40%. A certain type of coal produces 2.26 kilowatt hours per pound upon combustion. What mass of this coal in kilograms will be required to produce the electrical energy necessary to heat the house if the efficiency of generation and distribution is the 40%? Okay. All right. So we're kind of going back to working with the percents and figuring out now really how much heat I need, right? I need three 3,500 kilowatt hours in order to heat the house, but now it's saying that in that, you know, generation and distribution, this is really only 40%. So I need much more. I need 60% more to add to the 30, 3,500 kilowatt hours. So the first thing is we got to find out what's that total number. Now, since we're dealing with percents, right, it's just a simple percent formula. Remember, it's part over whole. So they're told me that it's 40% and a percent is always part over whole times 100, right? If you're keeping this as just a 40. So the part would be the 3,500 kilowatts because we need to know now the total amount. 60% is going to get lost, you know, in generation and distribution. So I'm going to put the 3,500 up here and the X down here and then just solve for X. I divide by 100, divide by 100, I get 0 0.40 equals 3,500 divided by X, right? We cross multiply if you want, 0.40X equals 3,500 divided by that number. And now we're going to get the total amount of heat or the kilowatt hours, right? Okay. And then once I do this math, I'm going to just erase it because we need to do more math. All right, so now we know that we need 8750 kilowatt hours. That's the total. Okay, so pause the video if you need to write down this math, but I'm just going to get rid of it because there's more math to be done. So I'm just going to quickly get rid of this. All right, and maybe I'll bring this up here. So just as a reminder, this is now the total, uh, we'll say the total energy. Okay. 
So now let's see. It says a certain type of coal produces 2.6 kilowatt hours per pound upon combustion. So they give me a little ratio right here, right? And they're asking for what mass of this coal in kilograms will be required. Okay, so we have to start with what we're given. And in here, we can convert to pounds because we have a relationship between kilowatt hours, which is what we're starting with, and pounds. So let's try it out. 8,750 kilowatt hours. And remember, times by a ratio, right? We're just converting. So kilowatt hour on the bottom. And now it says kilowatt per pound. So I'm going to put the pound up top, which is LB, right? Now in this relationship, the 2.26 goes with the kilowatt. So I'm going to put that down here. 2.26 go down here per pound. When they say per something, it's every one of the pound in this case. So I'm going to put a one up top here. And the kilowatt hours cancel out. And now we're left with pounds. So this would be basically the pound of coal, if I just add that over here. But did they want that? No, right? They wanted the mass in the coal in kilograms. So that's why I just wrote down a little conversion down here for you guys, right? One pound equals 453.6 grams, but they want it in kilograms. Well, how do we go from a gram value to a kilogram value? That one's pretty simple, right? All we gotta do is just divide by a thousand. So if I take this number and divide by a thousand, it's 0.4536, right? And maybe I'll just, that was a little scrunched. Four, five, three, six. So now here is the relationship. One pound equals 0.4536 kilograms. And now I could just keep going with it. I could do another ratio, throw the unit that I don't want, the pound of coal on the bottom, and the kilogram of the coal goes on the top, if you want to say that, right? We can add the word coal there. And then with that ratio here, right? One pound is 0 0.4536 kilograms. Cancel out the pounds. And now you're left with kilograms of coal. And that's what they wanted. What's the mass of this coal in kilograms? So you ask, we deliver. <laughs> 8750 divided by 2.26 times 0.5 point, uh, times 0.4536. And maybe we'll do three sig figs. Doesn't really matter, right? So I'll say 1,000. I'll just put the, the full number here. 1,756 kilograms of the coal. And that's it. This was a mammoth of a problem, but we did it. We did it all, all right? So hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. This actually concludes the enthalpy chapter. So it's been a wild ride, but I had fun. I had a lot of fun, you know, teaching you guys through it. So I hope you guys understand enthalpy and how heat transfer works. Remember those formulas, and I will see you all in the next chapter. Take care. Bye-bye. Oh, and if you want to subscribe to the channel, that would help us out too. So thank you for that. Okay, now bye.